So in every month up until June or so, there was a new article that read something like, the Linux market share, it is, it is on the rise, it's up from 1.3%, it is now at 2.5%, it is up from 25 it is now at 3%. These articles were constantly coming out, and I did a video on this myself, but unlike a lot of people, I was incredibly skeptical of these numbers, and you know what? I was rightly skeptical because as of September, we're back to where we were at the start of the year. Now this doesn't mean that my explanation was right all along, but what it does mean is that there's a lot more going on here than just people are suddenly becoming interested in Linux. So this is an article from OMG Ubuntu by Joey Snedden. Linux market share for September 2020 is, shall we talk about something else? Because I'm pretty sure that he's written three articles about this just by himself. So this is the graph right here. We'll go over this in just a bit, but September saw the third successive month of contraction for Linux's share of desktop operating. Uh, please hire an editor. There's supposed to be system here since posting huge leaps back in spring. So it's actually been dropping for a couple of months. The first drop was very small between June and July. But after that point in August, there was a massive drop. And then in September, it came all the way back down. So Linux fell from 2.69% in August 2020 to 1.47% in September. The gains once again go to macOS up from 9.55 to 9.72 and Windows 10 up from 86.98 to 88.32. This represents a rather substantial drop. Does it lend credence to the idea that when people were working from home they were using Linux more? Now I think this is a reasonable explanation, but I don't think that it explains everything. So where this starts to get really interesting is if we take the original graph we have here, which is just the general Linux market share, and then drill down a bit to separate out the Ubuntu market share. And as you can see, Ubuntu basically makes up for the entire growth. Now, I have a better view of it over on this tab. So initially when I was looking at this data right here, I thought that June was where it was interesting because June is where it starts to fall. And if we look over on this one right here, basically the same trend happens. But I realized that the interesting point is actually a little bit earlier back in March. So this is where Ubuntu shoots way past everything else. Now keep in mind that everything else is basically every distro except for Red Hat and Fedora. Those two, along with Ubuntu, have their own categories. So this line includes things like Manjaro, Pop! OS, uh, Arch Linux, Void, things like that. So what happened after March that could have explained this growth? Well, I'll give you a hint. The year right now is 2020, and April is 04. Basically, this is when 2004 LTS dropped, the latest version of the Ubuntu LTS. Now, this could potentially explain the massive spike because I can see a lot of people just trying out Ubuntu, like specifically Linux users trying out Ubuntu just because they want to see what the new version's actually like. But there's one problem with this explanation. Let's go all the way back to February 2019. So that will actually include the data for 2019-04. And as we're going to see when this loads, you don't see any spike at all. Okay, so what else has changed then? Well, WSL has been gaining a lot of traction among Windows developers. And in June 2019, WSL2 was dropped for the Windows Insider program. And if you're using, say, a lot of developer tools, you're probably going to be in the Insider program, especially if you want to have the most cutting edge features. So even though WSL2 was only publicly released in May 2020, I feel like most people who were going to use WSL2 for a daily use case were probably already using it. Now, obviously, that's just speculation, but I feel like it's fairly sound speculation. Now, the other big thing that's changed is around February, March is where a lot of countries started to lock down. And as you can see, you see a big spike in Linux right around this point, but nothing like you see with the Ubuntu drop. So I feel like this actually may lend credibility to people just trying out Linux because they're actually bored. So following that logic, people will go back to Windows as places start to open back up. And that does explain the trend that we see here with Ubuntu dropping. But what it doesn't explain is why we have this spike in general Linux here. 
and I've thought about it for a couple of hours and I have no idea how to explain that. The only explanation I can think of is as places started to open back up, there was a lot of backlogged work and businesses that are using Linux aren't using Ubuntu, which doesn't really make any sense in my head. Maybe more places are using things like Red Hat and Fedora, but I don't know. I don't think that really fits the explanation properly. But there is another way you can interpret this data, but you need to know how the data is actually being collected. So if we go over to the methodology tab and we go and have a look at, I think it's this line right here. So we count sessions to our network sites, which are defined as a user active on a site with no more than 30 minute inactive period a user can have multiple sessions per day. The data is compiled from approximately 100 million valid sessions per month, widely distributed over thousands of websites. Now, to understand that, you need to understand how you would actually define a session. So the way you could track a session is by using a browser cookie, logging an IP address, or if you have an account with that website, then you're going to have some sort of user ID attached to it so you can work out when that user is actually on the website. Now, what happens if you, say, have a lot of computers sitting in offices that aren't actually connecting to the internet every single day? Well, obviously, those aren't going to be counted as part of the Windows market share. So as those Windows computers aren't being turned on, the Windows market share is going to come down a little bit because even though that person might have a Windows computer at home, one of their two computers they use every day isn't actually pinging the internet. So that could explain why just generally Linux had a rise. It may not have had a rise at all. Ubuntu did rise, but that might just be from regular Linux users actually using Ubuntu. The general market share rise of Linux could just be a lack of Windows computers actually being used. Now, I don't think that any one factor is at play here. Obviously, with the lockdowns happening, people are probably going to get bored. Some of them might try out Linux. WSL is getting more popular. I can imagine some of those people are probably going to use Linux a bit more. Obviously, without certain computers being turned on, they're not going to be pinging the internet. I think all of these play at least some sort of role in explaining what's actually happening. I think it's important to just keep in mind that it's not as simple as here is just this one explanation that will basically solve everything. But also keep in mind that this isn't the one and only source of data. So, for example, if you go over to the Steam hardware survey and you go down to the OS version, as you're going to see, there's basically been no change to Linux. It's at 0.94%. It was at 0.94-ish percent a month ago. It was basically the same the month before that and the month before that, and the month before that. Okay, so it's maybe maybe gamers are a bit of a weird subset, because obviously most people playing games are probably going to be on Windows. As you can see, the OSX usage on Steam is far lower than the general population. But then we have another source, where as we can see, Linux is at 1.74, and if we look at this graph right here, uh, the Linux line is the red line, it's moved a little bit, but it's still in basically the same spot it's been since the start of the year. But sadly, this one doesn't have a distro breakdown, so we can't see if Ubuntu had the same sort of spike that it had in our first data set. Now, going forward, as much as I would love to see the Linux market share actually rise, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. It's been at the exact same value the entire year. It was probably the same value the year before and the year before. Maybe it's had a 0.05% rise or drop, but it's still basically the same value. Maybe one day it'll rise, but today isn't that day. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with people being really excited about these numbers because, hey, if it was actually happening, that would be awesome. But the whole point of this video is don't trust statistics blindly, especially if you don't look at how the data is actually being collected. If you're going to see, say, a graph that looks something like this, Go and find out what their data methodology actually is. How was it collected? How could you actually game the collection? So one way to game this is you could set up a bunch of virtual machines, ping all of their websites, and that would artificially raise up the actual count. So understand the flaws that exist with the methodology. And once you actually understand those flaws, and maybe the data is absolutely perfect, you need to understand how to actually interpret the data and not just trust any journalist out there who just shows you a graph and says, hey, this is what's actually happening. Look at the data and say, okay, 
what is actually happening here? Do I think that what this person is telling me is true? Or are they trying to manipulate me into thinking whatever they want me to think? So hopefully that was an informative video. Right now I'm actually writing a paper on big data, so this sort of stuff is what's taking up my entire mind right now. So I thought it would be fun to talk about, and hopefully you guys actually learned something from it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinion, Andrew Craig, Nathan, Monster Dutch, Chico Bento, Joseph Peter D. Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilver. If you want to go and support my work, the links down below my Patreon, subscribe style, leave pray, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel's available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.